Hey, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, thank you for joining me in this masterclass. This is our Platform Essentials series, where we highlight and dive deep into TradeStation's functionality. Today, we're going to talk about trading options on web trading. So before we get started, let's go through the disclosures. By the way, for those that are joining us for the first time, my name is Jesus Nava. I'm the Director of Client Training and Education for TradeStation Securities, and it's always a pleasure to do these classes. Let's go through the disclosures. Keep in mind that every symbol and idea that we talk about is for educational purposes only. It is not a recommendation of TradeStation. Also, that active trading is not suitable for everyone, and that past historical performance is no indication of future results. For additional information on these disclosures, go to www.tradestation.com forward slash important dash information. All right, guys, let me switch over to my TradeStation platform, which I don't have open yet. So let's go ahead and give that a try right here. So open up my browser, going to tradestation.com, clicking on login, and I'm going to go to web trading simulator. Let me hide my shortcuts at the top. Okay, and that way we'll just concentrate on the platform. I'll type in my username and password. Okay, so we have a few people connected here in class and I wanted to get a feel as to who here uses or has used web trading. Uh, let's, let's just simplify the question. Are you currently, not have it open right now, but do you actively use web trading? Just a simple yes or no right here in the chat. Um, because a lot of times I know many of you would rather be on the desktop that has all the bells and whistles and everything you can do on trade station when it comes to customizing it. So no, 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 no. So it seems very clear that um, this is not the platform that you would rather use. And I, and I think it's because of that, because of the ability for you to customize and do whatever is it that you want to do uh, using the desktop version. Um, I consider the TradeStation web trading platform a simplified version of TradeStation. Yes, and I know Jim, uh, some of you, some of us need all the bells and whistles. I love when you know getting into uh, easy language and trying to create new things and customize scans and customize orders. So I spend a lot of time doing that uh, and. To a certain extent, you know, web trading doesn't allow you to do that. But in the event that you guys are not in front of your computer where you have, you know, trade station installed, let's say that you're at a family member's house, you're on a vacation and you don't take your computer with you. Uh, and sometimes working, you know, from a mobile device screen may be a little bit too small because that's, that's another thing, you know, especially when you're trading options. Uh, having a screen on your mobile device with an option chain, it's very limiting as well. But if, you're, if you've gotten used to trading options in your mobile device, that's excellent because the functionality there, it's, it's very robust. But sometimes we just need a bigger screen uh, and we don't have TradeStation installed and uh, web trading comes to the rescue. You know, So here we have web trading. So let's talk about trading options within this platform. Um, one of the things that I miss when I'm building options spreads right here in web trading is the graphing functionality. I think graphing is, a, or position graphing, is a great tool for you to understand the options position that you're about to trade. I mean, we have to get into a trade understanding what the risk reward profile of that position is going to be. I mean, where's the profitability? What is the what are the probabilities of the prices going in either direction, up or down? You know, those, that's the type of information that I enjoy calculating when doing it on the desktop. That's, of course, not available here. We have some information, some data that's available. We're going to look at what is available and how simple it is. You know, maybe sometimes that's exactly what you need. You just need a simple platform. Maybe you're not looking for all the bells and whistles. And that's totally fine. Everybody has, everybody's got their own style of trading and that's why we have to serve all these different styles, right? Correct, and uh, needed for vacation or emergency. I think Jim, you've been there before. Uh, so um, sometimes you need something quick to pull up your TradeStation account. 
especially when the trade station platform is down. You know, software breaks, workspaces get corrupted. If you've been using trade station for a while, you know that it happens. Uh, trade station is not immune to software glitches and bugs. So whenever that's whenever it's broken, you know, the, the web trading platform is a great way to pull up your trade station account while you get the desktop fixed. Back in the days when we didn't have web trading, we didn't have the mobile app, you know, it was tough because if you did not have your desktop running, then you were out of commission. You were out of trade. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't even watch what you had open. So we had a lot of clients, you know, struggling to get somebody on the phone, calling the trade desk to see how their positions were doing. It was very, very, <laughs> very stressful, not only for us who were taking the calls from clients, but from you yourself. I mean, you had positions, you had money in the line. So um, it, it was really a stressful time. So now having different platforms that you can connect, not only uh, relying on your internet connection, but also on, 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 uh, on a mobile network, you know, that's always a good backup. Um, Phil is asking, well, the thing I don't get, and correct me if I'm wrong, we will get logged out of our desktop if we try to trade out. Yes, you will. Uh, and that's if you only have one username and password. The thing is that you can only be connected one time. And this applies to all our, our platforms. If you're connected on the desktop, then of course it'll recognize that connection and it won't allow you to connect on web trading. And it does, it does tell you, you know, you're connected somewhere else. Would you like to disconnect? You'll have the ability to disconnect that other terminal. Um, but if you're looking to have web trading and the desktop connected at the same time, there's always a solution for that. Uh, you can get a, an additional trade station username and password. Client services can help you with that. And if you are a stock trader or an options or equity options trader, uh, the additional data fees is not really a big deal because we're talking about a dollar for each one of the stock exchanges. And maybe I think, I'm not sure if the fees have changed, but the last time I checked, you know, the options exchange was giving real time data for $3 a month. So if you were, if you were in the need of getting an additional computer or another terminal connected to trade station and be able to trade your, your account, it's something you can do, but you would get a separate username and password combo. And uh, the only thing you need to be aware of is the additional fees that that entails. So uh, to be more accurate, please get somebody on the phone from the client services department and they'll tell you exactly how much it would cost you, how much cost it would generate for you to get that second terminal connected. So if you're paying, if that's what you're paying, Phil, if you're paying $20 a month on data fees, I think that would be the, the fee that you would have to pay for that second data. Uh, and, and the reason for, for that is because exchanges um, were really, you know, giving trade station a hard time because we were allowing uh, users to connect on multiple platforms at the same time. And um, I, I, I guess, you know, they want their exchange fees. And uh, that's the reason why you have to pay additional data. I don't know if there's an additional fee for the platform. I doubt it because the platform is free for anybody that's trading on it. I'm not sure if anybody here has that type of setup where they, um, where they have multiple logins to trade station. You know, sometimes it happens when you have a spouse that trades with you. You have a trading partner. You know, each one of you have your own separate username and password, but you're trading the same account or it's the same brokerage account. So if anybody here is already set up that way, it'd be interesting to know your experience. Um, I see. Um, you know, trade station, as I said, you know, contact client services. They'll know exactly how much this would cost you, and they would be the ones that would set up this additional login for you guys. Okay, let's go ahead and... Uh, open up one of these uh, panels. So let me go ahead and take this one at the bottom. And I'm just gonna maximize it so it covers the whole screen. Um, I have a chart right here, that's totally fine. I'm gonna go here to the plus and click on the option chain. So this is the way that you load the option chain to web trading. Um, 
it comes up blank, so you do have to supply an underline. I'm going to go with Apple, A-A-P-L. All right. And let me go ahead and increase this to maybe 125, so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, and this is it. This is how you load options station or an option chain instead of web trading. Okay, class is over. <laughs> Um, there's a couple of things that I want to point out uh, because there are some differences between what is visible here and what's on the desktop. The first thing that jumps out at you is we don't have groupings of expirations the way that you see them in Options Station Pro. There is a bar right here on the very top that has all the expirations and you have a scroll bar that allows you to scroll left and right and click on the specific expiration that you want to see. Right now we're looking at May 27th, which is today. So the, the, we have some weekly options expiring today. And you have you know, the other expirations with either a W, which are weekly options, or an M, which is the monthly. So here, June 17th has an M, and there's a 21D inside of parentheses that tells you how many days uh, before the expiration of this option chain. So I'm going to click on it. It loads you know, those options onto my web trading. And I can increase the number of strikes very easily also using the strikes drop down right here. The 10 is gonna split that number into you know, strikes above and strikes below. So if you select 10, it'll be five strikes above the underlying price and five strikes below the underlying price. So if I increase that to 20, then you can see that it just increases the number of strikes right here on my screen. There is, Implied volatility right here on the far right. We have no information about expected move. I think that's an added benefit of uh, doing it on Option Station Pro. I want to have an understanding that based on volatility, how much is the underlying expected to move? And that's data that I miss here. Uh, there are certain columns that you can add. If I click on the little gear on the top right corner, let's see what's available. Um, these are the ones that are currently selected. So I can see the delta, theta, open interest, volume, and implied volatility. We have uh, the ask size, bid size, close, extrinsic, gamma, high. Let's see, last. So we have some information that you can you know, include in your chain. There's nothing here that I would want to see if you want to see the net change or the percent change, maybe that's interesting. Let's go ahead and select that. And you can put it anywhere in your list. So let me put it here at the very end or the very first column. So I guess the way that you order the columns here is the way that you'll see them appear from left to right. So we have, I mean, right now implied volatility is the first one, but that's because that was before I made the change. Now I want net change, net change change percent to be at the very top. And I click OK. And we can see the percent change from the close of yesterday. I would assume that that's the net change percentage. The calculation that I'm assuming is based on the net percent change that we have on the trade station desktop for the underline. But this is the percent change for the stock, I mean, for the option itself. Let's go ahead and take a look. So this particular one has a percent change of 50. Let's take a look at, what, um, let me see if I can um, link these. I'm gonna link my option chain. I don't think this works in a similar fashion as the desktop does. So let me go ahead in here and link this. Let me go to the option chain and click on this one, the 144. No, it doesn't uh, copy the symbol. Right-clicking does not work here because this is a web-based platform. So if you right-click on the web trading platform, you just get the browser menu. This is my shortcut menu for Chrome, which is the browser that I'm using. But I want to see this symbol. I want to see it on a chart. Um, it's symbol. One of the things that you can put in here. Let's see. Yeah, symbol is one of the things you can add. So let me put symbol on. Okay, so this is the symbol. You can see that for the 144, we see 22617, which is the expiration, the type of call, and the strike. 
Let me see if I can type in that symbol right here. So we have AAPL 220617 call 144. All right, that's my five minute chart of that call. Let's go ahead and turn this into a daily chart. All right. Daily chart does not have as much historical data. I only see, see three bars. That's okay. It may, have, it may not have been trading, you know, a few days ago. But if I look at, let's see, let me look at the closing price here. This is uh, May 26th. The closing price is $5. And the current price, what is it? $7.50. So the net percent change is actually 50%. So if I go back to my option chain, these values are accurate. That 144 strike call increased its price by 50% from the close of yesterday. It was $5 from the close of yesterday. I'm not sure if that's information that's relevant or it could help you in any way, but uh, I just found, when I looked at the numbers, I found that these are pretty high, you know, considering uh, that is just a percent change from the close of yesterday. But then again, we are in the options world. So things dramatic as these happen all the time. Here we have some, some calls that increased in price by 80%. Of course, they're still, you know, uh, worth 30 cents per share, but um, it's still a very significant price increase, 80%, right? Interesting. Hadn't looked at, you know, percent change for, options pricing, but it's interesting that it's there. Let's, let's going to remove the column because it's kind of, kind of, you know, moving my chain off center, which is something that is happening because I'm, I've magnified my view here. So again, so a few things that we talked about, uh, we talked about expirations, we talked about changing columns, um, everything else, you know, pretty much standard. You have strikes right in the middle, uh, bid and ask are colored in red and, and blue, you know, blue because it would generate a buying transaction and red, it's a selling transaction if you were to click on the bid. But other than that, you know, the functionality is the same. If I wanted to buy that 144 call, I just click on the asking price. And as you can see over here, this sets my order bar at the very top to buy to open. This is buy to open. That call, the plus one means that I'm just buying one contract. And I have uh, expiration dropdowns, strike dropdowns, and type of option dropdown so that I can change and modify my order before it goes to the screen. So I may you know, change my mind. I may say, well, instead of buying the 144, which is $7.50 or 55 cents, let me buy instead you know, the 148, which is only $5. You know? So those are the type of things that you start thinking about and you say, well, can I change that on the fly? Of course I can. I can come in here and say, I'm gonna change it to 148. And you can see how the price changes accordingly. We can see those buttons down here changing to the price. Well, let's go stick to the 144. Okay, so the prices are updated right here. We have three pricing buttons, natural, mid, and far. Okay, so the mid would be the price in between the bid and the ask. Natural would be the natural pricing. So if you're gonna buy it, you're gonna buy it at the price that sellers are asking for. And the sellers are asking for $7.65, and that's why that price is inside the natural button. On the far, you're pretty much hitting the other side of the market, so you're buying at the bid. So the $7.60 matches the bid here at the bottom. And of course, the mid is gonna be a price in between the bid and the ask. And you can click these buttons to automatically adjust your price here. So you can either click on any of these. And you can see that if I go to the natural, right here at the very top, I see calculated values that I'm interested in. For example, maximum loss. If you're paying $7.65 for this call, that means that your maximum loss is $765. You're holding a call. So you make money as the price goes up. If the price goes down, then your maximum loss is whatever you paid for this option. You, it just expires worthless. But that information is important to know. Uh, Break-even price level is 151. You know, I hadn't noticed this particular piece of information. I don't think Option Station Pro gives you the break-even price level. And the way that this is calculated 
is, I think, break even price level one. Let me just think about this a moment because if you're buying a 144, yeah, if you're buying a 144 call, this is a strike one of 144, and it's costing you $7.65. That's my price right here. That means that we add the $7.65 to my strike, and that gives you exactly a break-even level of 151. Of course, the last traded price of Apple is 148. So if we enter that position, would be we would be at a loss at the moment, but the price would have to go to 151.65 for us to break even. This break-even price level, I haven't seen it on Option Station Pro. I think. Uh, the times that I've wanted a break-even level, I would have to do the math in my head, but um, it's interesting that web trading gives you that number. Is it possible to search for futures options here? No, not for futures options. I, I suppose that, you know, web trading is connected to the same data network that the desktop is. Um, if you know the symbol of the futures options that you want to load, I'm sure that you can pull it up inside of... Um, instead of a chart, but um, the search functionality here, if I were to type in ES, now this just gives me equities. It doesn't give me any futures. And there's no, there's no checkbox that you find in Option Station Pro to enable futures on that, on this side. All right, so um, what else is up here? Maximum profit is infinite. Perfect. So I'm gonna put in that trade. Let's suppose that I'm gonna use the FAR. I wanna get filled at $7.60. I'm just going to send the orders. I get this confirmation that I can disable if I wanted to. I'm just going to keep it on. And there it is. An order sent. Very simple, straightforward. You know, I don't think the functionality is pretty tough here. In fact, we already said that web trading is a simplified version of TradeStation. A couple of things that web trading does differently. The spread drop down. It's organized. It's not just a big long list of different spreads that you can select, especially for you if you're getting started on trading options. Um, I think there's a benefit of having these groupings because now you can concentrate on bullish strategies, on bearish strategies, or strategies that are neutral, or strategies that you can put on when the markets are volatile. Uh, and I think there's a learning benefit by grouping my options this way, because you, then you have an understanding of how to apply these strategies and, and under which market conditions to apply these strategies to make a profit. Of course, you can go to all, and this would be what the regular list would look like on Option Station Pro and also on the mobile app. But I think this is a, an, an, an added benefit of you know, creating your spreads. So you can go, for example, if you want to do a vertical, I can go here to bullish, if I'm bullish, uh, because you also have a vertical that's bearish, you have a long put vertical. But under bullish, I go long, a call vertical. Let me try that again. Spread, bullish, long call vertical. And that's not responding for me. Let me go down to 10 strikes. Right, one more time. Bullish, long call vertical. Okay, there we go. I'm not sure why it wasn't responding. I'm not sure if it was because I was clicking on the right side. Maybe let's try, let me switch it back to single. Go back there to the menu bullish, long call vertical. Oh, now it works. So I'm not sure why I wasn't responding before. But now you can see that it pairs up the strikes automatically for you. And the distance between these strikes starts off at one. So it's going to pair up strikes that are next to each other. But you can increase that number by going to the drop down and selecting another strike interval, which means that it's going to skip strike prices in between. But this is a, a nice way of you just concentrating on what's important. I also like the fact that when you select a particular strategy, like a long call vertical, it pretty much grays out everything else because it only allows you to trade whatever you selected up here even you know, the bid side. So it's very clear as to what is it that you need to do. You need to click on an asking price in order to be long a call vertical. So I wanna do the, the, you know, the 144, 145 uh, price at 75 cents here. I click it, 
and the prices are sent right here to the very top. Very nice, right? And the pricing, of course, is the combination of the bid and the ask of both legs on this option spread. So uh, let's go ahead and put in a market order on this. Because I want to come back here to my positions. And I don't think I cleared my positions last time. And I sure didn't. You know, I was playing around with the options right here in web trading, and I forgot to clear out my prior position. Uh, one of the things that one of the things that web trading doesn't do, it doesn't allow you to combine legs so that you can visualize your spreads. I have two different spreads here. In fact, they're both vertical spreads, but they're using different strikes. Uh, where do we see it? Okay, the strikes are right here, 144, 145, and I have the 146 and 147. Um, it'd be great if I could combine them the same way that I do in Option Station Pro. So uh, that's one of the benefits of going to Option Station Pro. In fact, if I had multiple options spread positions, I would like to see them grouped as spreads, not like you know individual legs like in here. However, this doesn't mean that you cannot trade them as spreads. If I wanted to close out the one spread that I did earlier, the 146 and 147, I would just click on each one of the legs and you can see that they're both selected. So while looking at options, you can do multiple selection of legs. Of course, this doesn't apply to equities because so don't think that you can click on multiple equities positions to close multiple positions at the same time. This feature is only possible here in options because it allows you to or it allows you to select you know, options legs, uh, multiple options legs at the same time. So I've selected the 146 and the 147, and I'm going to close at market. You can see that when you click on close at market, it generates a, a closing transaction. This is a sell to close and a buy to close uh, those positions that are open. I'm going to send it, and you can see that it goes away. Now that I only have one vertical, my open PL that I see here is only for that vertical. Before, it was just combining all the different legs that I had for Apple. Okay, so again, functionality, very straightforward. Um, if I wanted to close this other position, again, click on one leg and then click on the other. Let's suppose that I wanted to set a stop to this. I'm going to click on trade, set my order type to stop market. These are my prices right here. So I'm gonna stop, these are the current prices. So hmm, let me think about this because these are negative numbers. And um, when I bought the call, 